Next, uh, we're gonna we're gonna conclude the program uh, with uh, Rhonda and Robin. Uh, head up our our research and uh, quality control department. Rhonda works more on the genetic side. Uh, works with the University of Minnesota. She's going to talk about some some uh, steer testing work we got we're currently been doing, and as an ongoing project. And then Rhonda oversees all our cattle on feed. Uh, she's the one who probably, uh, Robin, I'm sorry, is the one who uh, contacted you and runs down affidavits, make sure we got the, the IMI paperwork in place uh, so we got cattle are, are ready for uh, the program. I told them uh, our level is zero tolerance for air. And uh, they say, come on, that's a pretty high standard, but uh, I try and hold them to it. And thank you for all your cooperation, but I'm gonna put these two gals on. Uh, I believe Rhonda's gonna go first. Good evening, as he said, I'm Rhonda Wolf, and I'm here to talk about our industry-tested product that we're continually striving to produce. We've been doing a three-year study with the University of Minnesota. Dr. Grant Crawford has been very helpful with that. He's now with FormaFeed, who helped sponsor this event tonight, so we're very thankful to them. And so if we have any really hard questions, we can bring him up. We've done this study three different years. We're actually in the middle of our fourth year right now. But the first year, we had 24 limousine steers with 24 commercial Red Angus influence steers. In the second year, we had 30 of our pedigreed limousine steers with 18 straight bred Angus steers. Now these steers were AI sire genetically selected for both carcass and feedlot performance. So kind of a tough group to go against. We are able to get some of those same steers to compare with in 2011, and also some Simmental steers. Not only did we compare against the groups, but we've also been collecting DNA on these limousine cattle, and some of that goes back into our project that we've been doing with Zoetis and trying to develop a feed efficiency EPD. That's a busy slide with a lot of numbers, so we combined it into a three-year average. As we can see, the Angus steers um, had a heavier final weight and also gained a little bit better. At the end, in the carcass, they had a higher marbling score, which resulted in more animals grading choice. But when we take a look at what that cost, the limousine steers ate about a pound and a half of feed a day less and gained a third of a pound more efficiently. When you take this to a dollar value using a $275 feed cost, or the 174 days that they were on feed, it equates to about a $38 per head advantage that the limousine steers had. Once you pull the hide off and you look at the carcass, the limousine steers had about 20 more pounds of meat to sell. They had a two inch bigger ribeye, and they also had a 2% better dressing percent. I was also gonna mention that there's a couple of the students that work at the University of Minnesota back there, Jeff and Matt, and Josh used to work there too. They're working at training the steers to eat in those Kaling gates. They're, we individually measure the feed intakes. When you do some simple math, as we showed in the slide before, there was a $38 feed advantage with the limousine steers, but then there was that great advantage with the Angus steers. <clears throat> I took a five-year average of the difference between a choice carcass and a select carcass, which ends up being $6.75 times the the final body weight of the Angus steers is a $54 advantage. Now that's considering that 100% of the Angus steers would grade choice and none of the limousine steers, and we know that limousine steers can grade choice as well. When you take a look at the advantage of the dressing percent, simply by having more red meat, red meat to sell, every increase in one, every 1% 1 increase in dressing percent results in another $25 in our pocket. So the limousine steer had a $50 dressing percent advantage. When you total up the advantages, there's an $88 on the limousine side and a $54 on the Angus side. The $30 difference multiplied out over the 42,000 marketings that we do annually would be about a million and a quarter dollar difference. We can't afford not to feed limousine influence cattle, but we see that $54 quality grade advantage on the Angus side and hence we added the Angus to our mix and we feel that they're an integral part of a crossbreeding system as well. This is just a small portion of data. Robin will go over our, all of our carcass data from the year of 2012 and all of our feedlots, so I'll turn it over to her. As she said, I'm Robin Metzger and um, I work primarily on the feedlot side, do a lot of the working with the value-added programs. 
And here at Wolf Cattle, um, our economic engine is value-added products. And feeding without um, using anim um, implants and beta agonists, feeding limousine and limousine-influenced cattle, it just helps make feeding for these programs a lot more feasible. Another part that plays a role in it is logistics, managing our cattle flow with the price of fuel costs being high right now, it just makes sense to manage our flow. So up here on this slide, I have a picture of kind of where all our operations are at, and then also put on the, the packing plants that we send cattle to. So our cattle that we purchase from the upper Midwest are mainly backgrounded at the Wolf Cattle Depot in McLaughlin, South Dakota. And then our cattle purchased from the south and the central regions are brought to our Nebraska feedlots, Pine Creek and Eagle Creek. From the Wolf Cattle Depot, we sort the cattle into programs, and some of those will go to Golden Hills and put on grass. And then some of the Choice Natural and NHTCs and the Laura's Lean Cattle will go over to our Tegrity location, and the majority of our Choice Natural and NHTC cattle will go down to our Nebraska feed yards in uh, the Pine Creek and Eagle Creek locations. Then from our Tegrity location, once those cattle are ready to harvest, um, we feed out some cull cows and cull bulls, and those will get, go up to Long Prairie to American Foods. And um, some of our NHTCs will go down to PM Beef in Wyndham, and a few loads will go down to Greater Omaha from the Tegrity location. And our choice natural gap cattle will go over to Pineland Farms in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And then the Laura's Lean cattle will get harvested at um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin at Laura's Lean. Then from our Pine Creek location, the choice natural cattle will go down to Tyson at Lexington, Nebraska. And our um, our NHTC cattle from both the Nebraska yards will also get harvested at the Lexington, Nebraska plant and the Greater Omaha plant in Omaha. And then the majority of our commodity cattle from all locations go to the Tyson, Dakota City plant. Here is a pie graph depicting um, how the cattle last year were marketed. It, we sort them into three main programs. NHTC, which is non-hormone treated cattle. These are cattle going to the European Union. Uh, we have Laura's Lean, which is natural. And natural choice category, that also includes your GAP natural cattle. And last year, 19% ended up as commodity. This is a slide that um, I turn, this is the total of our, the average of our carcass data that we collected last year, and um, we strive every year to return the majority of the people whose calves we buy their carcass data back to them. And here, across the top, you'll see the quality grades, and a quality grade is made up of marbling and maturity, uh, prime being your highest marbled, and the standard or no roll on this slide is your lowest marbled. And then on the far side is the yield grade. Yield grade determines the cutability of a carcass and um, it's made up of, put together from four characteristics. You'll have um, hot carcass weight, overall external fat, ribeye area, and then kidney, pelvic, and heart fat. So a yield grade one is your highest cutability, and a yield grade five is your lowest cutability carcass. Then along the side, we break these down into categories. Commodity, Laura's Lean, Natural Choice, and NHTC. The Laura's Lean cattle are fed a low energy ration, and they are um, antibiotic and implant free. And these cattle, we target a select yield grade ones and twos. The Natural Choice cattle, are fed a high energy ration, and those are um, antibiotic and implant free, and those we target 80% choice or higher, and yield grade threes or better. And then the NHTC cattle are non-hormone treated cattle, so they don't have any implants, and those we target choice or higher, 
and a yield grade three or better. And so I highlighted on this slide the areas of our targets and if any of you guys have any questions about the carcass data that we return back to you, please feel free to contact me and I will try to help you best I can. Thanks.